So I want to shift and talk about states of thinking related to stratum levels of work. Is stratum level wor of work simply an incremental lengthening of time span, or is there something different about the way that these people think? Now, Elliot was a clinical psychologist, so he was very familiar with psychology, but in 1948, he jettisoned psychology and moved from being a clinical psychologist to a recovering psychologist. He said, you know, psychology is interesting, it is statistically valid, but it doesn't explain the kinds of things that I see going on inside organizations that I work with. So you psychologists go ahead and play over there in that arena. I'm going to go look at some other things over here. Now I said recovering psychologist because uh, to find labels that would describe the states of thinking that he observed, he had to go back into psychological literature to find a descriptive label. So for stratum one, the descriptive label that he found to describe the state of thinking was the label declarative. Now I remember this label for this state of thinking with the following phrase. I do declare. Now I don't have much evidence behind me to support what is mostly my opinion. The state of thinking at stratum one is mostly opinion without evidence to support it. A person with stratum one capability sees the world as black and white. And it doesn't matter which because it doesn't require evidence to support either position. Shades of gray in between have no place. It is a very disjunctive way of seeing the world. In fact, you can give a problem to a person with stratum one capability and they can see that problem. In fact, they can see this alternative solution here, this alternative solution here, this alternative solution here. They'll start with this one over here, but if it doesn't work, they'll shift and use this one over here. Trial and error as a problem-solving strategy. Stratum two, Elliot described as a cumulative state of thinking. The ability to put stuff together, to accumulate things together. Given that same problem, a person with stratum two capability can see the problem. They can see this alternative solution, this alternative solution, and this alternative solution. As they look at these alternatives, they notice that there is a pattern. They can put these patterns together, accumulate standard operating procedures manuals, best practices. They can accumulate those things, apply them, and solve the problem. Stratum three, Elliot described as a serial state of thinking. The first time where Eliot observed cause and effect thinking. If this is the case, this must be the result, cause and effect. A serial state of thinking required to put together a single serial system. Stratum four, he described as a parallel state of thinking. The ability to handle multiple serial processes at the same time. But this is not multitasking. This is truly seeing the dependencies, the interdependencies, the contingencies, and the bottlenecks that exist between our multiple serial processes. What's the role at stratum four? Those are the people that do what with our systems and subsystems? Integrate them together. It requires a parallel state of thinking. Now, Elliot was a recovering psychologist, but he had this very strange and uncanny ability to be able to talk to somebody for about 10 minutes. And after that 10 minute conversation, he could tell you whether they were displaying stratum one capability, stratum two capability, stratum three, or stratum four. Now you must admit, that would be a handy thing as a manager to have in your back pocket. What happens to water at 32 degrees Fahrenheit? It changes state from a liquid to a solid. What happens to water at 34 degrees Fahrenheit? Nothing. But at 32 degrees, it specifically changes state. What happens to water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit? Changes state from a liquid to a gas or a vapor. What happens to water at 200 degrees Fahrenheit? Nothing. But at 212, it specifically changes state. One of the things that Elliot observed is that these states of thinking or the transitions between these states of thinking occur at very specific temperatures, very specific time spans. Anybody in here a computer programmer? Know anything about Boolean logic? No help in the audience? Well, you do. 
For the rest of you, you'll be very happy to know Elliot was not a computer programmer. He didn't know boo about Boolean logic. Uh, but in 1988, a computer programmer explained to him the way that computers think, and it truly caught his attention. Now, you may not have uh, experience with Boolean logic, but you've probably all used a Google search engine, right? So if we're going to put some search strings into a Google search engine, John, I'll pick on you. So if we put the search string John and the search string daily, how many responses are we going to get from Google? Which seems very odd that we would get thousands because there's only one sitting in the room. So what is Google doing with these two search strings? Does John have to be connected to daily? Does daily have to be connected to John? So we get all the Johns, we get all the dailies. What's that mathematical operator between these two search strings? It's either John or daily. First mathematical operator in Boolean logic is the operator or. Elliot heard this and it perked up his ears. He said, you know, I have this very strange and uncanny ability to be able to talk to somebody for about 10 minutes and after that 10 minute conversation I can tell you where they're operating with stratum 1 capability, stratum 2, stratum 3, or stratum 4. A lot of people think it's because I'm a recovering psychologist that I have the ability to analyze the content of their argument when mostly I am listening for the conjunctions, the way they put the elements of their argument together. Guess what conjunction Elliot was listening for when he identified stratum 1 capability? Now if we want to get closer to the John Daly sitting in this room, we're going to go into Google Advanced Features. We're going to put quotation marks around those two search strings, which tells Google to do what with them? Put them together with the second mathematical operator in Boolean logic, the operator AND. Guess what conjunction Elliot was listening for when he identified stratum 2 capability? The operator AND. Now the third mathematical operator in Boolean logic is the if-then statement. Exactly what Elliot was listening for. If this is the case, this must be the result. Cause and effect relationships is what he was listening for. Stratum 3 capability. Now the fourth mathematical operator in Boolean logic is stated in a number of different ways. It is a biconditional statement or a multiconditional statement if and only if. Or if and only if then. Exactly what Elliot was listening for. Multiple conditions. The conditions required for a parallel state of thinking to handle our multiple systems and subsystems. Now as you look at this slide, it is not imperative or critical that you remember these labels or the language that may be connected to them. But what is critical to remember is that the differences in these states of thinking are as different as ice is to water is to vapor. And that the transitions between these states of thinking occur at very specific temperatures, very specific time spans.